Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Saturday Morning Cartooning. Let's take a look at some of your art. Great job guys. Let's solve a mystery and rewrite history. Today we're doing DuckTales. Though many people think Walt Disney himself created all of the Disney labeled characters, like Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and Goofy, many popular Disney cartoon characters were created by cartoonists other than Disney himself. Some of the artists who worked for the Disney company worked anonymously, meaning they couldn't use their own name on their own artwork. One of these artists was Carl Barks. Carl Barks famously worked on many of the early Donald Duck cartoons, but he was even more famous for his work on the Disney comic book line. He was considered the best duck artist and created the character of Scrooge McDuck, the wealthy uncle of Donald Duck, in 1947. The character was so popular that it helped spawn an entire universe of characters called the Disney Duck Universe, where anthropomorphic animal characters populate the Earth. In the late 1980s, a popular afternoon cartoon show was created called DuckTales that starred Scrooge McDuck and his three grandnephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. The popularity of DuckTales kicked off a whole series of Disney afternoon animation called The Disney Afternoon and featured a bunch of other shows like Tailspin, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, and my personal favorite, Darkwing Duck. Even today, Scrooge McDuck continues to be a well-known character in 2017, a new version of DuckTales became a big hit on Disney XD. The popularity of Scrooge McDuck, as well as the entire Disney Duck universe, is due largely in part to the unsung hero of a cartoonist, Carl Barks. All right, let's get started with Scrooge McDuck. Uh, make sure you have paper, a pencil that you like, an eraser that you like, and your inking markers in various sizes, depending on how small or how big you draw. Uh, let's take a look at the reference photo. And uh, Scrooge McDuck is one of your classic Disney characters with those big saucer eyes. And of course, the Carl Barks inspired um, uh, duck bill. We can see that the character has a circular shaped head with a lot of embellishment either on, the, on either side and also on the top with the top of the um, hat. And we have this body that swoops in this direction. And then it's got an arm going up here, arm going out, a leg going out. This leg is hidden behind the money bag, so we're not gonna see that. We're going to see the money bag, but when we construct the money bag, we have to make sure that we get that triangle side and then create perspective with the bag so that actually looks like it's going back a little bit. We see, it, just like the character, the bag is three-quarter side view as well. All right, so let's begin with the pencil lines. Remember, a light touch with your pencil at first, and we're going to begin with a small circle right about there, and please make sure that you leave room for the hat and, of course, room for the body. Um, we're just gonna put a circle for right now. We'll put a section for either side of his, um, I guess it's sort of like just his feathers that are coming out, feathery cheeks, I guess. And he's got a bill. Going on here. That's all we're going to do, these basic shapes right now. We'll go back in and put in a lot of detail later on. Um, his hat is going to start from behind that circle, go around, up and around, and then come out this way. And then we're going to see um, the top part of the hat right here. And we can adjust that. Maybe might have gone up a little too far with the brim. Let's just make it a little bit lower. All right. And we're going to put in the body line. Remember, his body's sort of swooping in this direction. Uh, and then we're going to put in his um, torso section, which is sort of just like a bean shape, really. For now. Again, we're putting in basic shapes first. We'll go back in and put those details in. For right now, just um, put a little suggestion as where the arms, legs, and parts of the body are going to be, and then you can add on top of that. He's going to have one arm going out this way. This is the arm that's going to hold the money bag. So we're gonna have a fist right there, and then the money bag underneath. And remember what I said, we're gonna try and show perspective with it. So we're just gonna put in the, the triangle shape for the side of the bag, and then lines going backwards. Again, creating the illusion of depth or perspective. All right, so there's the money bag too. 
this arm is going to come, it's going to go down and out this way, and he's going to be um, twirling his cane. So right now, just put in a shape right there. You can put in where the cane will be. Remember, we're drawing lightly, just in case we need to move some lines around, it's easier to erase. Cannot stress how important it is to draw lightly at first. All right, then we're gonna have one leg going out this way. We're going to see the underside, if we take a look at the reference photo, we're gonna see the underside of this foot. So let's put it right about here, kind of like a, a loose upside down triangle with little bumps on the top. And then we're going to see uh, actually, let's bring this up a little bit. He's a little too tall. We're not going to see much of the other leg because it's going to be behind the uh, bag. We might even have to move the bag down a little bit. So let's do that now before we do anything else. Erase the original line. You might not have to do this, but I'm going to based on my drawing. Um, move it down a little bit. Create that sketch in that perspective. I might have to move down the fist a little bit. There we go, much better. Now we can see that we're only going to see the foot of this leg. The rest of it is hidden behind the back. So we're going to just put a shape, just letting us know where that foot is going to be for now. All right, so we have our, um, our primary lines. Let's start adding in a little bit more structure and a little bit more character. Uh, let's put in face lines. He's three-quarter side view, so you're going to curve the face lines in that direction and in that direction. And that is where we're going to put one eye. So the first eye is going to go right about here. And like I said at the beginning, these are the big saucer-shaped Disney eyes. They go up and they go far, far vertical, and they're not too uh, horizontal. I'm actually going to space them out a little bit more. So his be like here, one eye is going to be there. There's going to be a bit of a space and then the second eye. Now, the second eye that's turning away from you, we're not seeing it full on. So we're actually almost as if you think about it, it's like a half of an oval. All right, so one eye is going to be there. The other eye is going to be half an oval, all right? And he has uh, the little spectacles, little things that are just balanced on his um, his beak. There's no um, there's no hardware to these glasses. It's just another little. You could even erase those if it makes it easier to uh, understand. That's his spectacles there on the beak. And I thickened it so it makes it look like a actually like a coin shape. All right, he's going to have one pupil there, one pupil there. You can shade those in so that you know that's what they are. Put in a little line for the beak and then the rest of the beak is going to go out this way. It's going to go down and then up into a smile. I have to say that when it comes to beaks, especially Disney duck beaks, they are very difficult, at least for me. They might be real easy for you. But for me, I really have to watch what I'm doing. So this beak uh, from underneath the glasses, you're gonna draw a line going out this way. That's the top lip essentially. All right, and then from this, from just inside that curve, draw a line going down this way. This will eventually become, it's too thick. Let's try it again. There we go. This line will eventually become the smile, so that's going to go into that cheek section right there. And now let's create the bottom lip, and you're just going to follow that contour going up this way, and you can just thicken it right about there. And then that goes around that bottom lip, and we can just make this spectacle a little bit bigger. There, now everything looks like it's where it's supposed to be. All right, let's give him an eyebrow. It's gonna go on top of this eye. The eyebrow goes into the hat, which also goes right into a little tuft of hair that's gonna go right here into another eyebrow. 
that's going to go right into that eye. All right. Now we're going to have a hat line right here. It's going to go down into the feathery cheek on this side. So there's the hat line, and then about halfway from there, you're going to go straight down, well, maybe a little bit of a diagonal, and then create these little feathery sections. So one, two, three, four, five. You don't have to put five, but um, I'm just following the drawing, but please do what you think looks right for your drawing. All right, and now that I'm looking at this, I do want to move this spectacle over a little bit. Again, you might not have to do that, but I'm going to for the purposes of my drawing. There we go. Okay. All right, and then there's a little smile line right there. Before we move on to the rest of the body, let's just thicken this line so it actually looks like uh, there's a bit of dimension to the hat. Line going up, over, and down. I'm gonna put a line for the ribbon in the hat. And then we're gonna draw a little shine line. This line right here. So that his hat is not all black. We add blue to it, so it gives it the illusion of a shine. Okay. Now let's give him a neck. And now we can start drawing his jacket. He has this red collar that's sort of, it's very uh, puffy. It goes behind. goes behind his neck and comes out the other side. So maybe a little bit further down. There we go. Put the curve right there. And then he has one little button right there. This is gonna be red. The uh, jacket's going to be blue, which we're going to start putting together now. We're gonna have this arm going out this way into the fist holding the money bag. So from right about here, we're gonna thicken the arm. This will be the fist that's holding the money bag. Well, this will be the fist. This is gonna be the cuff right here. Right here is gonna be the fist. So we're going to just put a little line here at the bottom of the cuff and then start making the fist. What's good about a fist, especially when it's facing in this direction is we don't see all the uh, individual fingers. All we're gonna see is one bump, two bump, three bump. That's gonna go all the way around like this but then we're gonna put a line right here for the handle of the bag. And the other side will be right about here. Don't worry about the bag right now. Let's just finish up the rest of the body. All right, so we have the lines going back in towards the body. He's actually gonna be going in a little bit as if he's, as if he's stepping out this way. So this diagonal, um, echoes this line of the leg. All right, and we can give him a little bit of a belly and a belt. And then this arm. This is the arm that's gonna be twirling the cane. So we're gonna have a line going down here Two little bumps of fabric as if his arm is, is uh, the fabric of his coat is folding because his arm is bending into a cuff, which will be right about here. Let's erase that line inside. Interior cuff line into a hand. Now, here's where we really see some finger positioning. It's as if he's twirling his cane. So his cane is gonna be in between this finger and this finger. This finger is gonna be in front of the cane. This finger is going to be behind the cane. So for right now, let's just sketch in the hand 
This is the thumb. One finger. Two finger. The third finger we're going to draw from here because it's going to be bending in. Remember, this is one of those characters that has three fingers and a thumb. And then a little line for the um, palm of the hand. What's interesting about um, the Disney duck characters, because they're anthropomorphic, they have arms and legs. They don't have um, legs and uh, wings. All right, we can thicken the line of the cane. Remember, it's going to be going in front of this one. So we can, just to not confuse you later on, we'll erase that interior line of the finger. And then on this finger, is going to be in front of it. And it's going to be going sort of behind this one. So I just want to move this finger up just a little bit. So it looks like it's actually pressing into that second finger and helping him twirl. So we're gonna have one there, that's better. A little bit up more, and you'll get more of a, um, a line for the wrist and the palm. All right, let's finish up the cane, and then this line goes right into the belly. All right. Let's spend a little bit of time on this money bag. Uh, I could already see that I'm probably gonna need to just extend it on either side real quick. Um, he's gonna have the handle, put a little half circle at the bottom of the handle there, and a little half circle at the bottom of the handle there. And I'm gonna have to extend the length of the bag just a little bit to accommodate that. Uh, let's put a little gold clasp right there. Well, you'll, <laughs> you'll see that it's gold here, especially when we start coloring too. And the other side there. And it's gonna have some money spilling out. So let's put in a couple of bills. We could add a third one in there. All right, here's the inside of the bag. Here's some lines to make it look like it's actually a bag. And to top it all off, we're going to put a money sign on it. We're going to put in a letter S. Okay. And then we're going to draw a long rectangle right down. So then when we come when it comes time to ink. the lines where they cross and it'll be all in a piece. There. Okay. Let's do his uh, bottom half. Um, this part of the coat is going to come out and then just go right back in and it's going to be essentially behind the bag so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, this part's going to come out this way almost flaring out a little bit, um, but a lot of it is gonna be cut off by this foot once we get it drawn in. So let's do this foot. Um, let's start by accentuating that line. Now he's wearing uh, spats instead of shoes. Uh, and spats are these uh, fabric, uh, 
spats are these fabric coverings that go over shoes traditionally, but because he's a duck, they're just gonna go right over his, um, his slippers, his webbed feet. So it's gonna go underneath the foot. So you're gonna see the underside of the foot. So we're gonna draw in that strap of fabric. And this is the heel. And then we're gonna thicken the foot so that it actually looks a bit two dimensional. And we're gonna connect it to that line. And we're gonna see the other side of it. So there we go. And then this will come up see the top of the spat, all right? This is going to be his bottom half. It's gonna be a little feathery down here, so we could just do this. And his leg coming out. All right, then we're gonna do this side right here. Again, we're gonna see the top part of the spat this time around. One, two, three, webs. All right, those are the basic lines. Now it's time to ink. Get out your inking markers. Uh, I'm thinking for this particular character, we're going to use, I think a fine point will be fine. Let's just double check that line. Looks good. All right, let's start inking. Um, usually like to ink what's coming out at the viewer first, and that's probably gonna be the duck bill. So let's ink this line right here. This is the top lip, all right? But then before we go to the rest, let's do his um, spectacles. So it looks like coins. All right, then we can do this line going up and down creating that bottom lip and the smile at the same time. You can go past that line as just a touch just to help it look a little bit more two dimensional. Let's do the eye. A rounded half eye right there and his pupils, which in classic Disney cartoons usually just black. All right? Let's do the eyebrow into that little tuft of hair or feathers. That eyebrow. Let's also extend that line up again a little bit, accentuating that it's a molded two, uh, three-dimensional character on a two-dimensional plane. Okay, there's uh, one side of his feathery cheeks. That's the under hat line, the other side of his head into the other side of his feathery cheeks, into his neck, into the collar of his coat. Oh, let's do the hat, can't forget that. Now, you can see that I thickened that line right there. That's what we're going to do blue. Also, this is going to be blue. That's going to give the illusion of shine. All right, let's do his smile line. Let's move on to the rest of the body. Let's do this arm. I'm just going over the lines that we already did. Pay very close attention to the cane. Remember, the cane's going to go above or in front of this finger, but behind this finger. So we're gonna start the cane right where that, first, that second finger is. Go ahead and ink that in. So it's in front of this finger, but it's behind this finger, so we can ink this finger all the way. And then this one's gonna be bent inward. We can see a little bit, of it, little bit of the cane in between these two fingers and then continue. Finish the cuff and this side of the jacket. Don't forget his button. 
this hand's easy because it's all bending in towards the bag, which we're gonna draw in now. There's the gold clasp of the bag. The other side of the clasp. And he's got some bills. You don't have to go crazy making sure money looks like money. Just put some dollar signs on it. Gets the point across. And then the interior line of the bag. The money sign in there. One belt. This side of the coat. This side of the coat is going behind the foot. So let's put in some feather lines right there. That's the bottom of his torso. This leg is gonna come out into the spat. goes around the foot so we essentially draw the spat in first and then draw the the, sh the, um, the foot around it so do this line okay finish up that line there and then this spat we see the top of so actually makes it a little bit easier and I think that's all of our inking lines now let's take a couple of minutes to just erase our original pencil lines before we add some color. And as is usually the case, whenever I erase my original pencil lines, I typically will find something that I forgot to ink. And I did, this little bit of his beak, right in between his spectacles, right there. And I think I got it. Let's add some color. Let's do the Let's do the blue of his jacket first. While we have the blue out, let's put a line of blue right here on the brim of his hat, as well as the shine that we drew in. We'll go in later with some black. some red for his collar and cuffs and his spats. He also has a bit of red on the ribbon of his hat. A bit of yellow for that button. We're gonna be using yellow again, so keep it close using some orange for the duck bill. Let's do the black of his hat. And once we do this, we can really see how that blue comes across as a shine of the hat. All right. Use a little bit of light blue. I have a light blue colored pencil and add that to his spectacles to make it look like glass. And so that's a little bit different than the, the white of his feathers. Also, while I was inking, I noticed I needed to put little tips on the cane here and here. The cane itself is going to be brown and the tips of the cane are going to be yellow. Now let's finish up with a little bit of light green for the bills. We can use dark green for the dollar sign on his bag. Yellow for the bag hardware, meaning the handle as well as the clasp sections. And use a little bit of a darker green, a darker brown for the bag itself. And I think we got it. Here we go. Scrooge McDuck.